I created this four dimensional landscape with JavaScript and P5.js. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did it. G'day everyone, my name's Barney, and yes, you did hear that right, we're going to be creating this four-dimensional landscape inside P5.js. If you're new around here, P5.js is a creative coding library that's completely free, that's built in JavaScript, that lets you create visual projects like this one really easily in the browser. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this code and actually run it for yourself in the browser so you can play around with P5.js yourself. So hopefully at this point you're wondering how we're going to create this four-dimensional terrain, and we're actually going to take a step back before diving straight into the code and think about what it is we're generating and we're going to work our way up from two dimensions to the four dimensions. For two dimensions, we pretty much just want to know at any given location, what is the type of terrain we should be showing? And to do this, we're going to use Perlin noise. If you're not familiar, Perlin noise is a type of random number generator that given some input produces values between zero and one. And importantly, the outputs are similar for neighboring inputs. So if you map it out, you get these smooth cloud looking textures as opposed to the white noise you'd get with a standard random number generator. P5.js has a noise function built in, so working with Perlin noise is incredibly straightforward. So what we can do is we can pass the noise function a 2D location and we can map the output of this noise to different types of terrain. So for example, if the noise value was 0.3 or below, we could make that water. And if it was below 0.4, we could make that sand and below 0.6, we could make that grass and so on. I've actually done this in the past on my infinite terrain video, which you can check out up here. Translating this to code, I've got a get noise value function, which takes in an X and a Z coordinate. Now we're using Z instead of Y because Y is up in three dimensions and we will be moving to that eventually. So we're using X and Z. And you can see this function simply scales the inputs a little bit and then returns the value from the Perlin noise function. I've got another function here called get color, which takes in the noise value we've just generated and then outputs the appropriate color based on that noise value. We can then simply loop over all of the area that we're generating and draw a square at each location that is colored based on the output of our get noise value and our get color function. To extend this to the third dimension, instead of looking at the output of the noise as simply a type of terrain, we can also interpret it as a height. And when we do that, you can see we get this. Because we're drawing in 3D now, we have to tell P5.js that we want to use the WebGL renderer when we're creating the canvas. The camera and lighting setup are a bit outside the scope of this video, but you can check them out in the code in the description, or you can let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me make a video on it in the future. To take this into the third dimension, I've added a get box height function, which takes in the noise value and remaps it between the minimum and the maximum terrain height. You can also see I've got a height scale here, which was used to animate it between 2D and 3D. So if you're running this code for yourself, you can press the H key to activate that animation. We can now replace the rectangle function with the box function to make use of our new height variable to display our terrain. The location that we give the box function is actually the center of the box. So if we don't want our terrain to be double sided, we have to offset the box by half of its height. To make this easier, I've made a draw box function that will handle this for us. So you can see here, we pass in an X and a Z location and it'll figure out how tall the box should be based on the noise value and then draws that box for us. And just for fun, I've added trees that are drawn if the terrain is tall enough. And these are just made out of some more stacked boxes. Once the terrain's done, I then draw a transparent blue box at sea level for the water. You can see I'm just extruding the tiles from our 2D version to make these square columns for the terrain, but you could just as easily use a mesh with vertices that are offset by the heights that we have figured out. And this will give you a more traditional terrain look. I've just gone with these columns because I think they look cool. And finally, we arrive at the fourth dimension. But before we take the plunge, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up to help it spread to more people. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe as well. So the fourth dimension, it sounds a bit scary, but the changes are actually pretty minimal from the 3D version. We're gonna be constantly scrolling through the fourth dimension, so it can help to conceptualize the fourth dimension as time for this. So now we're gonna be asking the noise function, what is the height of the terrain at this location at this given time? And P5 makes this very easy for us because there's a version of the noise function that takes in three coordinates. So we can simply add a time variable to our get noise value function. And this of course means that we need our draw box and draw terrain functions to also take in a time variable. Then we can use the millisecond function to get the time our sketch has been running and pass that into the draw terrain function and sit back and enjoy the show. If you want to see more on Perlin Noise, then this flow field video could be for you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.